and being told it's all in your head. That's the reality facing hundreds of West Australians struck down with Lyme disease. Tired of being told the illness doesn't exist, they're fighting back, targeting politicians and doctors in a desperate fight to be heard. And they warn it could happen to anyone. Well, I've had Lyme for 17 plus years and didn't even know until November. I'm 37. I've had it since I was 19. I've been unwell for at least 20, 25 years. Most people know the story that I've been ill for 13 years. Their faces are racked with anguish. Men, women and children desperately ill with a disease they've been told doesn't exist. I've got lesions on my brain. I am refused treatment because I've got Lyme disease. They said it was all in my head. <laughs> that I was doing it for attention. Strangers with remarkably similar stories. I had a whole team of doctors tell me there was nothing wrong with me and to go to the psychologist. A 13-year-old girl, what was I supposed to do or think? I was terrified. I had fever, I had sweating, and then I had this torso and back rash. And I went up to a local doctor and I said to him, could it be something from the ticks? You know, I'm covered in tick bites. He said, oh, we don't have tick diseases in Australia. So he sent me home. What you're seeing here, us sitting here, we are the tip of the iceberg. Lyme disease usually starts with a tick bite. A tick with Lyme will transfer the infection through the skin into the human bloodstream. It'll move like a corkscrew, often launching multiple attacks on different parts of the body. About four of them actually bit into me that I found the next day. And about a year and a half, it all started and just went downhill real quick. The effects can be devastating. There's often, but not always, a terrible rash. What you can't see are the headaches, fatigue, muscle pains, shortness of breath, lack of concentration and memory, sensitivity to light and noise. About this time last year, I, for whatever reason, just wasn't able to move my legs from the waist down. They did test after test, MRI, EMG, did all the cardiac tests as well. Nothing came up, nothing was odd. And they sent me home with nothing. My dad had to go out and buy a wheelchair for me because we couldn't get help. I was admitted to a different hospital in October of last year and they said the same thing. The way to get you walking again is to take away your wheelchair. <gasps> So why does no one believe them? Well, Australian health authorities say there's no evidence that ticks here carry the infection. So most doctors won't diagnose Lyme disease, despite mounting evidence from patients who know they contracted it here. We did get it from tick bites in our backyard in Chittering. I have been bitten by ticks over the last 11 years several times in my backyard. Who can say that they've never left Australia and they have Lyme disease? So that's one, two, three, four of you. It is in Australia and the government needs to wake up and see that that is the truth. We are all here. We know we are sick. We have been diagnosed to have Lyme disease. We are the evidence. How much more do you need? Hey, you in pain? Yeah. In your head? Oh, we're just... Last year, we reported on Bonnie Burns, so sick she was barely able to walk. With Perth doctors refusing to acknowledge Lyme, Bonnie was forced overseas for treatment. Sadly, she says nothing's changed. I'm still having seizures, so at least once a month I'll head down to the local hospitals because if I don't go, they'll go, why didn't you come down to the hospital when you had a seizure? We could have fixed you, we could have helped you out. Oh, every time I go there, you make me walk back out that door, make me feel like an absolute idiot about myself, that I've got this sickness that's in my head. We sit in there for three or four hours every single time and then they say, well, we don't know what it is. We... And then we leave. And, um, and the only thing that the infectious disease specialist could tell us that she has a post-infectious medical phenomenon. <laughs> that's all that he'll give me. Bonnie says without government and medical support, patients are helpless. We can't just keep helping ourselves with the invisible medication, the invisible money, the invisible information that we're trying to feed ourselves to give ourselves hope. But the government seriously needs to get off their asses. Stop worrying about stupid mining taxes and 
up in the GST, put that money into the medical system. Like, seriously, seriously, it's a joke. Are you going to get better? Absolutely. I'm determined to. Theda Meant is another sufferer we've reported on before. Once a broadcasting student with a bright future, Theda has been sick for 13 years, initially told she had chronic fatigue syndrome. Somebody saw the Today Tonight program and they said, that girl's got Lyme disease. And she has. Like so many others, Theda had to send her blood overseas for testing. Her mum, Carol. The biggest thing for me is that Theda was incredibly depressed and talked all the time about taking her own life and not wanting to be alive. And with the treat, and nothing helped in the medicines she was given, antidepressants or anything. And then we're now having some treatment from a doctor in America and she's treating with precursors to help the brain and Theda's depression's improved tremendously. You've probably seen Theda, you've probably seen Bonnie, you've seen their stories. What's that like watching that? Do you sit there and go, Finally, yes. I People who understand, yes, that's me. Yeah. yeah. I saw Bonnie um, relatively recently on the TV and that was my pain. I recognised it immediately. I've seen just about every specialist in Perth trying to get to the bottom of why I was so unwell. Um, this was before I had children. Um, unfortunately, I passed it on to two of my daughters and they are now very, very sick. Jenny's heartbreaking story shows what misinformation can do. I'm really, really angry. I'm getting upset now because if I had been treated appropriately when I was asking for help um, with the right antibiotics, I wouldn't have passed it on to my daughters. There are entire families with Lyme disease and still health departments won't act. My mum was bitten in New South Wales 27 years ago and she got the bullseye rash. And because they denied it. Did she pass it on to you? She went to the doctor with the rash and they were like, I don't know. And they just sent her home. Mm. And she's given it to her three children. The WA government maintains there's little evidence that Lyme occurs here and says treating people with long-term antibiotics can be falsely reassuring to people who believe that they have a chronic infection. It'll make life a lot easier for us if the government would just accept and acknowledge the fact that there is this illness, educate people in that so we know how to treat it and how to explain to people what's actually going on. And I've felt suicidal for the last 15 years because the depression is so severe for several reasons, not just because of the fact that no one's believed me, but because I thought there was no hope. But there is hope and there are treatments available. There's people who don't, they were wheelchair bound and they've gotten out of their wheelchairs just by being on this treatment. Who was the person who got out of their wheelchair? I think there was someone, that's you, is it? I started treatment on the 6th of December last year and I have not used it since the 1st of January. <laughs> No longer suffering in silence, this weekend they'll take to the streets, part of an international protest for Lyme disease awareness. We need this acknowledgement to filter through the health departments to the health professionals so that they are allowed to help us in the correct way. The government has spent about $4 billion on support of illegal arrivals in Australia. People here in this room right now are Australians and yet they won't get any funding. I actually think the government's been extremely short-sighted because it's going to cost them so much more money, yeah. so much more money to look after sick people than to get us well again. If you have Lyme disease, the government of Australia denies it and that is what we are fighting for here. Having the support of everyone, knowing there are other people in my situation, I believe we're going to get there and we're going to achieve change too. Perth's Lyme disease protest is at the Cultural Centre in Northbridge this Saturday from midday. Head to our website, sevenperth.com.au, where you'll find links to other sites. Still to come... You can't handle the truth! The best movie lines of all time. Like a box. From the